Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Since hast thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place. Now this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. That. Oh dear, please get this teaching. Get this teaching already. Please get it and use it for your personal retreat and help somebody with it who you know really loves God. If I stop here, what I said, as simple as it sounds, is already a miracle. The refusal to embrace the whole counsel of God. And there is an explanation for that. Are we together? Now, you see, the way God builds people, the way God builds people is that when God calls you, listen carefully, based on the calling and the election of grace that is upon your life god will tilt you towards a spiritual dimension to know him in a certain way that at the point you are learning him that way you will not know that it is incomplete and he left it intentionally so that at the end of your training you will know him so much and his ways in a dimension but he does not intend for you to run with it in isolation there is someone else who has another dimension that is not captured in your experience but is needed for the overall growth of the body. Now the challenge is because of my excelling in the dimension that was committed to me, you will assume I know everything. And my pride will not allow me humble myself and admit that there are other dimensions needed in the body that were not captured in my training. So, I now begin to mentor people to reflect my limitation. And I do that by teaching them that any dimension that is not captured in my spiritual experience is not needed for them. So, chances are excellent that if God has raised me, excuse me, to be, say, an administrator and to be a leader over people, you will be surprised that the scope of my training will capture in a rich dimension the spirit of wisdom but i may not encounter the spirit of prayer and supplication it does not mean i will not pray that dimension will not be well hosted in my experience so if through leadership i now begin to build formidable systems i can now see a man of god who is given to prayer and say look at these people instead of them because i'm seeing the deficiency of what leadership should do in his structure rather than knowing that this dimension should complement so you can look across the body of christ and you can discern with surgical precision the dimensions that have been ignored in churches in lives you can know that the prayer ministry was embraced but wisdom was ignored you can know that wisdom was ignored uh, wisdom was not ignored they are wealthy they are blessed but their spirit man is weak you can look and know that these people have ignored the prophetic to their detriment embracing the whole counsel of god when jesus took the bread remember at the last supper he took the bread which he said he was himself he broke himself into different dimensions nobody in that dinner table carried all the bread everybody carried a piece of the bread so if you carry a piece and you believe you have all he was the one who broke himself so it's not error he broke himself deliberately so that if all of him must come back everybody must come with the peace that he was given 
is someone learning so i can carry my piece of bread and teach it accurately that is good but now the marking script will not be how well i taught it will be how well i taught and how well i aligned my piece of bread with respect to the rest if i now ignore a ministry that reflects a dimension that was not captured in my experience let me tell you what will happen the multiplier effect will happen especially in those you are raising and leading and mentoring so you find out that there are people who are mighty prayer warriors fasting giants but they are poor they are broke there is no influence their lives their children are hooligans because they cannot the things that pertain unto life and godliness they do not have then you have those who are rich and influential carnally minded and church is just a jamboree of flesh absolutely nothing spiritual there don't forget what i just said the two major challenges with the body of christ number one imbalance exaggeration of truth beyond its jurisdiction beyond its assigned jurisdiction and then number two the refusal to embrace the whole counsel of God the whole counsel of God by reason of my spiritual training and my my environment how i grew up both physically and spiritually i didn't come from a background that came close to capturing the holistic dimension of god that would bless me and i thank god because i recognized this early in life and ministry and i had to come to a point where i would choose to just press towards the dimension i was having or to now open myself to be able to embrace other dimensions that were not yet in my experience but were needed for my overall growth when we started with god it was matters of spiritual encounters fasting prayer consecration pressing towards the things of god but i remember very clearly i think that was 2007 we were doing well in other aspects but other areas like wisdom the transformed mind financial prosperity understanding the principles of influence territorial dominion they were not captured in our experience it took an encounter with the lord to now begin to tell me that there are other virgin dimensions spiritually that i was not coming into and then i now began to source for materials from gifts across the body of christ with proven track records to now supplement and to complement that which god was doing and i am grateful to god for that decision i honor your man of god and his wife among many reasons for this that i just mentioned the ability to open up even to this dimension of god that he can bring so that you can be holistically edified are we together you have prayed you have fasted you have given yourself to sound doctrine and to teachings but believe me when i tell you it is amazing how many other dimensions of god is still out there waiting for our hunger to draw it to us hallelujah is someone blessed even things like walking in the anointing i have seen people touch very little dimensions of it and then camped there because our definition of walking in the anointing is the ability for someone to fall down probably in your presence and that is enough accreditation that you are anointed what a shame to our understanding you go and read the bible and really see the things that prove the presence of the power of god the ultimate test of authority and power in scripture is found in genesis chapter 1 from verse 2 to 4 the bible says and god said and there was and he saw what he said and it was good four tests if you say it and it becomes and we see it 
and what appears is good you are powerful every other thing you are just at the kindergarten level of understanding spiritual power the centurion understood this he said for i am a man under authority i have soldiers under me and i say to one go and he goeth i say to one come and he cometh do this do that he said i know you are under authority speak the word only jesus said i've not found such faith who taught you this who mentored you to understand that the zenith of spiritual power is the ability to use words and create possibilities that means you don't care what was there before you arrived and god said and there was and he saw that it was good so more than falling down and rising up more than all of those things that you can sustain stamina in the spirit now you really are a blessing because when you say god bless you they know it's not an empty statement it comes within it a climate within itself to create the possibility spoken hmm. like the rod of aaron that bordered just because you did not see the root does not mean there was no root the root was the word from whence it came so you can step into an atmosphere of chaos and create through words a spiritual climate and you will see a tree springing from chaos and you can't trace where the root is where is this drawing its nourishment from it's coming from the word that you have spoken to the point that jesus never calls himself anointing but he calls himself the word the locus of god I have taught again that anointing does not bring the word anointing is derived from the word the word of god is head even over powers colossians 1 16. the bible says please give us colossians 1 and verse 16. for by him who is the him the word where all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible whether there be thrones dominions principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him hallelujah praise the name of the lord so i thank god and i honor him for the privilege to be able to join hands with your pastor and to bring us into greater levels of spiritual understanding so that from the standpoint of accuracy we can now reveal the glory of god even more accurately in john um, acts chapter 18 the bible talks about a man called ananias is that true and the bible says that man was great he was mighty in scripture he was eloquent he was taught the way of the lord the bible says but he knew only the baptism of john one day he was preaching in a conference like this believing he was impressing everyone and there were two strange people seated in the meeting watching his limitation called aquila and priscilla the bible says after his lecture they called him and expounded to him the way of the kingdom more perfectly if he had written a book he would write his limitation and if he was an arrogant man he probably would say this is all there is full stop where there should be a comma father we pray that you will help us we desire to be people who are entire people who are complete people who will be able to do much for you and for your kingdom even within our lifetime we desire to learn you we desire to understand your ways spirit of the living god it is for this cause you were sent to us help us you are called helper open us up to the truth you are called the spirit of truth and indeed that you will comfort us we thank you in the name of jesus christ so we're looking at God's end time agenda. God has an agenda. God has a program. And there are three levels of power and anointing. Number one, there is 
the level of power and anointing that comes into your life by reason of being grafted into Christ your oneness with him when you become one with Christ you can draw strength from your union with him Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 amplified it says finally brethren be strong in the Lord and then amplified says be empowered to your union with him draw your strength from him that strength which is boundless might provides so the first dimension of power and strength is that which comes from your union with Christ through the new birth experience the second dimension of power is that which comes by reason of your office that when God calls you among the five things that validates the call of God upon a man is that spiritual empowerment he empowers you for the assignment so there is an anointing that is not just upon you is upon your office for as long as you occupy that office you can be dying as an individual and yet that grace still remains on your office as you function so it is possible for a man to not be doing well spiritually and yet excel in his office you can use the grace upon his office to wrongly mark the script that he is doing well elisha died as a person and yet his bones there was a residue of grace upon him because he did not hand over to any prophet so he died there it was not the grace upon his life he was weak and sick and died yet the anointing that was upon him somebody a, a, a dead body meandered into the grave and came back to life there is the anointing that is upon your office but number three there is the anointing that is upon you by reason of your discerning and aligning to God's program per season there is the anointing the spiritual empowerment that comes upon your life by reason of your alignment and the fortitude to discern what the Spirit of God is doing per season so it is possible to see in this end time people demonstrate certain levels of power and grace beyond that which was just given generally to the believer even beyond that which their office should command there is an extra grace that they carry by reason of being intentional about God's program hallelujah write this down our corporate mandate the first thing I want to reveal to us by the Spirit of God is that regardless the geography of your assignment regardless what it is that God has called you to do as believers in Christ we have a corporate mandate our corporate mandate is that which drives everyone who names the name of Christ and everyone who has been born into this spiritual experience even by the word and by the Spirit Two scriptures validate our corporate mandate number one is John chapter 1 from verse 6 and 7 this represents our corporate mandate as believers John chapter 1 6 to 7 the Bible says there was a man that man was sent from God whose name was John he was not sent as John he only had the name John when he arrived the earth are we together the, verse 7 the same came for a witness so John's assignment was not to be a prophet John's assignment was not to be a Baptist John's assignment was to be a witness of the light that all men through his effective witness might believe that is not only true for John it is true for every believer no matter who you are whether in business in politics in ministry as we know believers must be mentored to understand our corporate mandate regardless the geography of your assignment you are sent from God and that your assignment is to be a witness to be a witness of the light that men through your witness might believe are we together number two acts chapter one popular scripture and then verse eight the believers preparing at the, the upper room for the experience of the baptism here's what jesus told them before leaving at this time 
Jesus had returned and he gathered all of them and he was talking they began to talk to him he was talking about the restoration of all things and they said will you at this time restore the nation of Israel he said it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the father has put within his care verse 8 now says but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and that the purpose of that power is that you will be witnesses never said preachers never said businessmen never said politicians all those titles simply represent the geography of your assignment but from the mind of God as far as we are called believers are classified twofold according to our identification and according to our function when believers are classified according to our identification we are one with Christ we are joint heirs these are all names that represent our identification but if it is now according to our function he calls us light he calls us salt he calls us ambassadors and now he calls us witnesses are we together so that our corporate mandate as believers is to know that number one we are sent from God number two we are witnesses and that men are depending upon the efficiency of our witness to believe there was a man sent from god his name was your pastor the same came for a witness when you look at the blueprint and the script of the life and destiny of your pastor prophetically you may not necessarily see the name of this church or this program or today's program you will see a general caption that he was sent from eternity into time as a witness that through his witness men might believe so the proof of your witness is not activities who is believing because of your witness many activities can be ongoing and when God marks your script, he finds out conferences are happening, conventions. I'm saying that respectfully. You see that there are so many activities in the body of Christ. And I believe that they are well-intentioned activities. But when you vet them from the lens of this assignment, many of them fall short. Sincerely, I will tell you. There was a man sent from God. His name was John. The same came for a witness that through his witness all might believe you have no business talking about power until you understand this assignment of a witness you shall receive power and it is connected to your being a witness are we together now that means the more you are effective in your being a witness you justify the release and the multiplication of greater spiritual power even for efficiency if we are together say amen after that the holy ghost is come upon you and you shall be witness please write the word witness down who is a witness a witness is a validator of a claim a witness is a validator of a claim that means the primary assignment of a witness is to justify the speakings of another that means if there is a contention over something that was said it is the assignment of a witness to clear all doubts it is the assignment of a witness to bring to end every confusion as to the validity of a statement are we together a number of us here i believe are into uh, legal practice or the judicial system and you understand that when you are in the court of law uh, usually if someone brings a statement the judge will say do you have a witness because someone is negating that statement so they would call someone who will come and stand in the box and swear by whatever he believes in and say i would tell the truth and nothing but the truth were you there yes i was there hiding somewhere now how will believers receive the mandate of being witnesses when we were not there when he died what gives the audacity then to be a witness because when he died we were not born and yet we are supposed to tell the world that statement was not a lie when jesus said everything he said as captured in scripture we were not there and yet he says we will still be witnesses and he sent one to be with us who was there 
that in partnership two of us now become witnesses because although i was not there he was there are we together now and so if i do the speaking he does the confirmation we have to work together if i isolate him my witness will be poor because i will propose many things i will not have the engracing to defend so he said i will not leave you comfortless you are frail by yourselves but i will come to you sending us that paraclet the spirit of god he now comes and you in partnership with him he said tarry ye don't be in a hurry to go zealously you will meet a rude shock on your way until you are empowered the spirit of god that one encounter empowered them and they stood and preached on the resurrection with power and authority the bible says with great power they gave witness of the resurrection and great grace was upon them all not some all hallelujah everybody say i am a witness you have to indoctrinate yourself to believe this if you think i am a banker you will rob yourself from god's divine program if you think i am a prophet religiosity and ministry will destroy you if you say i am a pastor the headache of ministry will bring you down if you say i am a businessman the king of tyre is sitting on that mountain and waiting for you he will not ask you what you are buying and selling uh -uh. on that mountain the commodity of exchange is your soul and the world not your products are we together one more time say I am a witness there are terrorists today who are in the university studying do you know that so while students are attending lectures they are there in a medical class and you would think that because they are there they intend to help the world it is part of the assignment the person knows he's first a terrorist before a medical student and when he when they are teaching on the subject that relates to how people can die he will listen carefully because that is really where that is his core area of assignment he intends to use it because without backing that degree he cannot be given access to that space so while he's there attending lectures every day sponsored by powers that you do not know you think he's an ordinary student that is the same way you are too just because you are going to walk like everybody and greeting them and signing the register in the morning you are more than a banker you are more than an architect the reason why you have reduced yourself and just defined yourself by your geography you are a witness everybody say i am a witness say it to yourself convincingly i am a witness so if you are a man of god you are a witness behind the pulpit if you are a businessman you are a witness in the marketplace the marketplace is a place of exchange exchange of anything including the souls of men when you read revelations 19 it talks about babylon go and read what she she trades with she can trade anything including the souls of men so when you say you are a businessman it's more than buying and selling you are one who defends the interest of god at the marketplace when you say you are a lawyer we call you lawyer but you are a witness so prophecy and baptism were tools that john used to be a witness and how well he used them except that at the end of his life he forgot he was a witness he was offended over the light he was supposed to bear that witness to he got it right and said that i may decrease that you may increase offense got to him and he now sent the same jesus he ordained he said go and ask him are you the messiah or should we expect another jesus healed the sick and said go and tell john what you have saw what you have seen he said blessed is he who is not offended in me offense brought him cheaply when he forgot he was a witness a birthday present his head was used what satan could not do what witches and wizards could not do what what the, the this guy was a threat even to government for as long as he knew he was a witness but when he lost that identity a lady's dance took his head a lady's dance not the king's decree that is how cheap we can become when we lose that bishopric that we are witnesses your immunity is in your understanding that you are a witness 
the one who sent you makes it a point of duty to defend you he says when i sent you lackest thou anything not when you went when i sent you please pray in the spirit in one minute i am a witness declare it let it be from the core of your spirit i am a witness i am a witness in the name of jesus a witness behind the pulpit i am a witness as a media person i am a witness as an architect a witness as a kingdom millionaire billionaire i am a witness as a politician I don't define myself by my geography of witness i am a validator of the claims of jesus myself in partnership with the spirit of god hallelujah praise the name of the lord in the book of revelation chapter one when the voice that spoke to john in the isle of patmos was describing jesus himself one of the many names he was called was the faithful witness jesus are we together the bible says john was in the isle of patmos for the testimony of jesus that he sent he he heard the word and it was sent and signified by his angel and now he began to describe that one because he saw the glory of heaven and he saw seven lampstands he says and in the midst of the lampstand he began to describe one like the son of man and he was called the faithful witness the witness who did his assignment to the satisfaction of the father he said this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased I never carry the mentality that I'm a preacher. I never carry the mentality of a celebrity. I never carry the mentality of most of these things. No, I am a witness. I remain a witness. Whether on pulpit, I am a witness. Anywhere, I'm a witness. That means God has liberty to call on my attention anywhere there is need for validation. So I can be on my way to bed and something is happening in the earth and there is need satan is contending see let me tell you how satan works because man is the zenith of god's creation am i wasting your time because man is the zenith of god's creation listen carefully the greatest way to indict the integrity of god is to use man as a canvas and write a statement through him that indicts the integrity of God so when Satan afflicts you it's more than sickness he's using that disease as a pen on your body to indict the integrity of God the entire creation being the witness and so there is a need for heaven to reply back but we need a witness who is the witness who will stand to reply that statement and so for a long time because of the absence of a witness creation will have to use that aberrated story to believe god is not faithful but then a witness comes and that witness says in the name of jesus be healed that healing is god's reply back now to satan through creation that i am still seated on the throne signed by my witness are you seeing that now so by the time you call it healing and you clap for the man of god but there is a bigger essence to that miracle in the spirit everything that stops the saints from rising to their full prophetic potential is a letter from satan through man to god the reply will come from god through his witnesses that means whatever it takes you to be able to effectively communicate that reply it is within the power of god to give you this is the correct basis for praying for power lord empower me what for i'm tired of feeling like i'm not anointed too small a reason too small a reason give me another reason empower me because i see that there is need to validate your name across a territory and god says now you are speaking my language what do you need prosperity he will shift heaven and earth and even if it is for a fish to give you coin 
there are people who pray once and you see heaven rush to them it's not because they are saying any other thing their state has been glued to the program of God they know that they are witnesses father your name is about to suffer reproach and he stands up standing behind them as a mighty terrible one listen when you have this understanding it will change the dynamics of your Christian experience I am a witness so when someone says over your dead body to rise he didn't talk to you ah he didn't talk to you when David stood before Goliath if he went in his name and by his authority he would have been surprised he would have been a lesson for the nation of Israel to learn but he went there and Goliath was roaring and shouting and the young boy stood there you come to me with your bows you come to me with your spheres but I come to you as a witness in a name there is an authority that is bigger than what you see I truly believe that any part of Goliath that sling touch he will still fall down it was not about the accuracy of the hitting it was about a message that the power of God could move through that sling and bring Goliath down everybody say I'm a witness please get this revelation say I'm a witness now please look up there are many of you here who God has helped to rise commendably whether in the civil service uh, the, civil, the civil service or whatever um, um, firm that you work in do you know that when they promote you to certain levels certain rankings there are privileges connected to it like an official car am I right like an official house other people you even have security agents that work with you this is also true for the realm of the spirit it is true there are blessings that come on account of your determination to be witnesses when he sent them in his name two by two the Bible says they returned in shock and said even the devils were subject to us in your name and Jesus said no do not rejoice just about that rejoice that your names are written in heaven and then he said I saw Satan fall like lightning they were surprised ordinary us but we went in a name and as we got there when we were hungry someone just came to give us food Jesus what happened explain to us why we've been living begging for bread but now that you sent us how many days we went and returned no hunger when you know you are a witness you expect Abuja to do something to you that means the one who sent you should speak to the territory and say hear ye him hear ye him means whatever it makes for his sufficiency make it available please believe what I'm telling you and so you can be sitting quietly and the one who sent you can wake someone and say make sure this my servant does not beg when Jesus was ready to carry out his ministry he had the audacity to send them he says go to the streets that divides and you will find a code that no man had written on and if they ask you say the master had need of it and they lose that coat and brought it for him and it was a triumphant entry there are many people here there are colds tied that even the owner has not ridden upon because he's a caretaker but your mentality as a witness is what begins to release these things to you let me tell you this a witness is not distracted by the current results he's focused on the assignment so all the blessings that happen on the way i wish i had time i would have would have run through the book of judges to show you the test and the preparation the making of a witness in the life using the life of gideon there are two principal tests every in fact three that every witness must pass there are other things I want to talk about, but Judges chapter 6, I believe. Gideon was in hiding when there was an angel of the Lord came to him and said, Gideon, you are a mighty man of fellow. And he began to give all kinds of excuses. I will use you to do this and that and that. And he spoke to him. And the Bible says, as a result of that encounter, Gideon blew the trumpet and 32,000 people showed up and when they showed up ready to fight god said no this is not how i walk i don't walk with the crowd test number one whoever is fearful whoever is still thinking about where you are coming from and you love where you are coming from more than where you are going to 
he says stay behind the bible says about twenty thousand or thereabout went back that group was slashed into two the test of courage the test of audacity he said they are still too much test number two he got to a place and then he said listen to me very carefully all of you people you are about to get to the place of the water listen carefully now they were tired they were already walking and when they got there he gave Gideon a formula he said all those who bend to lap like dogs single them out and all those who lie down and fetch to take it you know what that means those who lap like dogs still have their feet standing they are ready to move they were enjoying the water the place of comfort after tiredness now they had walked a distance there were already results in their lives but they lap like dogs it was just their feet the assignment was still in view while they were enjoying the momentary blessing they were intending to continue but there were those who sat down there that means they had come i'm not continuing again this prosperity that i found is enough god do whatever with that assignment he says separate these two groups and only 300 people made the list maybe another time god will grant us grace to really deal with the subject of a witness because a witness takes more than availability there is a making when god calls you he does not send you your first assignment is follow me not follow it when you follow it you will be lost when god god never calls a man and then says go follow me and i will make you you will think that making is something that happens in two weeks read your bible how long it took to make the apostles three and a half years of solid mentorship daily for one day of encounter with the holy spirit look at the ratio of teaching to impartation we have missed it in the body of christ today we are always obsessed about imparting on empty spirits empty heads no vessels we keep wasting oil and pouring it on the ground the bible said when there was no vessel so the first assignment is go and borrow vessel borrow not a few enlarge expand see the ratio of teaching and mentorship to impartation three and a half years to one day the oil will always assume the shape of the vessel carrying it if the vessel is limited the limitation of the vessel will abuse the potential of the oil there was nothing in the house except a little cruise not knowing that the problem was the vessel and not the oil is God speaking to us one more time please say I am a witness let's talk about world evangelization having understood that we are witnesses we need to understand the context of our witness Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14 Jesus began to speak to them about the subject of the end times they sat them and they began to ask him and he was mentoring them and telling them several things that will happen and he got to verse 14 matthew 24 and here's what he says and this gospel everybody say this gospel of the kingdom he says shall be preached as a witness unto all nations and then the end shall come it is true that jesus is coming soon but the coming of Jesus is dependent on many factors. I hope you know that. Yes. There are factors that until and unless they are in place, he cannot come. The core factor is this that is written. Please give us that scripture again, 2414. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into where? In all the world not for the purpose of people believing it necessarily but as a witness let it be that they had an opportunity to hear it and then i will come because judgment for sinners will only be on the basis of the opportunity for them to have had the gospel i hope you know that the character of god's judgment was revealed in scripture already how does god judge with respect to what you heard so if they were not given an opportunity to hear the gospel 
another template will have to be used for their judgment yes it's not going to be a generic judgment to everybody no anybody who died without christ and did not have the opportunity to hear about christ genuinely there will be another basis for judgment read your bible when jesus went to hell apostle peter was teaching us he preached the gospel to the departed saints in hades there when they believed because there was there was a promise they were left with and they died not receiving it now jesus preached to them they believed and he came out of the grave with them is it not in your bible <laughs> that graves were open and the departed saints came out they walked the streets of jerusalem from that time he stopped becoming the only begotten he became the first begotten of we the brethren hallelujah world evangelization the average believer does not know anything about world evangelization we think it's for missionaries and preachers and we think mine is to do well let me just live a good life and love God and highest just donate some money to a man of God and I think God should be satisfied no we have to culture our understanding to carry the burden of the nations to carry the burden that is in the heart of Jesus this is the kind of move that will release tremendous power look at this scripture second peter chapter 3 and verse 9 second peter 3 and verse 9 the bible says the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness is that in your bible he says but is long suffering to us word listen carefully not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance how many should come all so we are examining the burden in the heart of the master he desires that all should come to repentance all every nation every individual our relatives who do not know jesus he desires that they should come to repentance one last scripture matthew chapter 9 please from verse 35 matthew 9 and 35 from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun God bless you. Please give us that scripture. Matthew chapter 9 from verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people next verse we're reading to 38 watch this but when he saw the multitudes he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd and then he said unto his disciples listen now the harvest truly is plenteous but the laborers are few prayer point pray ye therefore that the lord of the harvest the lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers for his harvest has that prayer been answered there are few times in scripture where jesus gives us his prayer point he says pray ye therefore the lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers laborers for his harvest let me tell you this i have heard several teachings that relate to kingdom come and world evangelization and the move of god across the nations now please listen 
the character of the gospel the gospel intends to achieve two purposes number one there is the message that saves the first dimension of the gospel that believers must understand is the message that saves what is that message the revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus the son are we together man and creation being the recipients of that sacrifice this is the gospel john 3 16 says for god so loved the world that he gave his then only begotten son today he's not his only begotten son is the first begotten among we the brethren that whosoever believes in him he should not perish but have zoe that is more than everlasting life zoe is more than everlasting life i think i said that the last time i was here i said everybody has everlasting life everlasting life is not something that you get when you come to jesus it's something you get when you pass through the womb of a woman both sinners and saints have everlasting life the question is location not the possibility everybody who left the earth is still alive in another dimension is it not in your bible did you ever hear of anybody who ceased living there was only a transition in dimensions the parable of the rich man and lazarus they left the earth but they were still alive another kind of life so the life jesus came to give us even though generically we say everlasting is more than everlasting it's a quality of life in fact respectfully speaking it is not god's kind of life if you say it is god's kind of life that means there's no basis of our oneness with him it is his very life that was given to us not the kind no it is the life of god given to us it was not another holy spirit given to us because we too are holy spirits i hope you know every recreated human spirit is a holy spirit is it in your bible so the holy spirit of god comes upon you is is the very same spirit not another so you cannot say another life no it is the very life of god that we have it is only that in administering that life listen carefully the administration of that Zoe life depends on knowledge. It is knowledge driven to release the full potential that is in that life. So you find out that because, thank you my people, I think you should be sitting down. If you keep coming up here, I will keep singing up and down. Don't worry. May God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Are we together? Yes. Ephesians 4.18 says, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts. So ignorance can alienate you from the potential of that Zoe life. Why is God almighty? Because he's also all-knowing. So the degree to which your knowledge grows, that is the degree to which grace and peace is multiplied unto you. Grace and peace is multiplied to you through knowledge. Are we learning now? So it makes sense that the all-knowing should be the almighty too. That the all-knowing should be the all-powerful too. World evangelization. I was talking about two dimensions of the gospel. Number one is the message that saves. Please say the message that saves. Now, the jurisdiction of that message is the spirit of the human that means that mess the message that saves um another person cannot be saved for another person that's what i meant the message comes to you personally you believe and then in believing that which jesus christ did the bible says there is a deposit of the life of god within your spirit you are grafted into christ through the ministry of the holy spirit is that true born of the word but there is a second dimension to the gospel the ideology that transforms territories please listen because if you are to understand god's program world evangelization there are many people who do not understand god's concept of invading systems and i've heard people even preachers say it wonderfully but then i know that that is not accurate listen please look up 
God's idea is not to make Nigeria like America or Dubai. I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but it's not going to happen. Let me repeat myself. The illusion that one day you will suddenly not differentiate Nigeria and America, maybe in the new Jerusalem, when the old head is wiped away. But as far as this civilization is concerned, it is, it is very childish and immature to even believe that. So God's program is not the physical transformation of territories yet. His program in order of priority is the spiritual transformation of hearts and then institutionalizing the mindset of the kingdom. Are we together now? Listen carefully. More than just the physical translation of territories, it is first the hearts of men to be saved, then ideologies that create an ample opportunity for the gospel. Now, we've gotten it wrong in many regards. So believers do not care who is saved or not. We just believe that if the power of God and the gospel is coming, every Nigerian now drives a Rolls Royce. We have skyscrapers. There is order, light 24 hours, no trouble. The president in Nigeria becomes greater than that of America. I agree with you. It's good to think big. It's good to think far. But let me tell you, we need to edit our priorities to know what is obtainable and what is not. Are we together? I don't mean to abuse. I hope you know that I'm a positive person. Believers have all kinds of ideas as to what they call thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom comes means, number one, that the life and the power of Jesus Christ finds expression across every unsaved heart. That is number one. And then number two, that the ideology of the kingdom, because territories are not changed by physical architecture. Territories are changed through mindsets and beliefs. In order of priority, when we begin to plant within people the mindsets that are consistent with scripture, are we together now? It will naturally begin to translate into value systems that translate society trying to physically change a territory without that transformation that has happened in, in the minds of people is a wasted effort it's like looking at the mirror and trying to remove what is on your shoulder by putting your hand in the mirror you correct it here and the one in the mirror corrects itself are we learning so that when People come and tell me, Apostle, pray for me. God is sending me to the nations. I tell them, okay, so talk to me. What are you really going to be doing? And they say, I'm just going to make sure. God said, go and raise me a people. And I said, I agree. I'm not doubting you. I know you met Jesus, but let me just help you. What exactly are you going to be doing? It is this lack of definition as to God's expectation and the clarity as to what we should be doing that has brought these various pseudo-Christian inventions around church and ministry. Believe me, God has an exact program and his power follows his program. So if you want his power, you must find out his program and stand there. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Believing that one day, I repeat it again, that one day, Nigeria will suddenly magically be transformed to become Dubai and then become another city to the point where everybody will rush and come because of physical civilization. That is not it. Our real treasure is not physical things. Our real treasure is the richness of the life of Christ that is resident within us. It is true that the nations will come, but they will not come because of the dexterity of the physical environment. There will be a quality of life that will emanate from the believer that will compel all and sundry, regardless the physical comfort they have. There will be things that they will not be able to solve with money. There will be things they will not be able to solve with policies. They will run to the house of God and they will, the Bible says they will learn his ways. We will bring forth wisdom that is beyond that which government and educational systems can bring because we are in partnership with the Holy Spirit who is the wisdom of God. World evangelization. Why am I teaching you this? Listen, we are going to pray 
and all of the miracles i will tell you why it looks like god is let me use for want of word mising his power you find out that there seem to be just few people across the body heavily anointed and it looks like there are few people who seem to command tremendous spiritual power and then the remaining just crowns and hope no that that can never be god's blueprint it is the degree to which we align with the program of God that is the degree to which we will command the investment of his power his grace his resources and even his backing if you're with me say amen, amen. I started this teaching by singing a song that song has been an anthem of my heart for many years to see to it that the nations come to the cross it is not because I'm a man of God because you will be learning that world evangelization is really not for preachers world evangelization is not for preachers you will be learning that preachers prepare those who do the world evangelization he gave gifts to men the gifts are not talents the gifts are men to men why for the perfecting or maturing of the saints that they the saints now mature will do the work of the ministry As can now give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands we see. Your light as it rises. Listen to what you are singing. As can now give the nations to you. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Please write. What is evangelism? No, 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 not rise. Please sit. I meant write. What is evangelism? Let's redefine evangelism what exactly is evangelism evangelism is telling someone about jesus not necessarily what is evangelism <laughs> evangelism has to do with deploying any and every scriptural strategy listen carefully every and any scriptural strategy that enthrones ends up enthroning christ in the hearts of men evangelism has to do with the deploying of any and every scriptural strategy that will end up revealing if you want to add and enthroning christ in the heart of man it's called evangelism so evangelism is not limited to preaching evangelism is not limited to tracts in fact the days that we live in right now conventional evangelism has been threatened by status quo or by by the new norm that we have you corner somebody and you are talking to the person they can arrest you because you are standing there and the person can you are trying to bring a track from your pocket they can say it was a pistol so the dynamics have changed there are few people today, few nations where you can be given permission to park stadiums and preach. What then is the strategy? Jesus was preaching and teaching and he said, go ye into all the world. Is that true? Now. Then he says, preach the gospel. And he tells you who to preach it to. All creation. He told you what to do. Go. He told you to go and preach, to declare, to proclaim. He told you where to go all the world. He told you when to go now. But he never told you how to do it. The how was left to your creativity and the civilization you find yourself in. Please listen carefully. He told you what to do. He told you when to do it. He told you where to do it. But he never told you how to do it because you would have to depend on the wisdom of the spirit past civilization to invent an effective strategy that will be able to make that happen. Hello. 
Kaso branda katiraka. Lika sobre heski da belia kuzi bradashia. Is God speaking to us? So the how is flexible. The message will never change. The recipient of the message will never change. The urgency of the assignment will never change. But there has to be flexibility to our approach. And our inability to wait with the Holy Spirit to allow the how that was assigned for this generation is why there is inefficiency in reaching the unreached. We are trying to use a how, a template that is inconsistent with the reality of the times. So if I have to depend today on packing every stadium in Nigeria and Europe, it means there are people who will never hear the gospel. Is that true? How come Islam, respectfully speaking, is the fastest growing religion in Europe, sir? And we have never seen them fill one stadium. So by what strategy is that happening? Statistics, you go and read it. There are many places that experience the move of God in the Middle East and certain parts of Africa that are being invaded right now by Eastern religions invaded right now. What strategy is being used? We don't see crusades. We don't see conferences. We don't see empowerment programs. Yet there is a move that does not seem to be resisted. We need to go back to our how. We missed a very powerful instruction. He didn't say go yet. He said pray ye the Lord of the harvest. Who is the Lord of the harvest? Lord means owner. The one who is in charge of this program. There was one who was put in charge of this program. He said pray that he will send laborers. Not look for laborers. Send laborers. He sends them with a strategy. This was the secret behind Joshua's conquest. When they got to Jericho, he did not assume that because they were prior victories, for every new battle, there was a strategy. And when he got there, what is the strategy? The men are uncircumcised. There is no consecration. So there cannot be that encounter. And he said, first things first, cut the foreskin of all the men. That was what happened. After that circumcision happened, the next thing a stranger came. And he said, I'm ready to partner with you now. Who are you? Because God told him that no man will be able to stand against you. He removed the sword. And the man had to explain. Say, no, 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 no. I came to give you a strategy. For this battle, here is the strategy. You can't kill everybody one by one. That strategy worked in another battle. But now it is not one by one. There is a strategy that will bring the whole system down. Did you not read in your Bible that Babylon the Great is falling? It says in one hour. Did you ever ask what strategy brings down that system? that formidable system the bible says jericho was shot nothing could come in and nothing could go out what a system five chariots could stand on the fence of jericho so how do you penetrate such a system rahab lived in the wall of jericho the fence of jericho was wide enough to be a house it would have been a, a fatal battle for the nation of israel to have tried to fight directly do you look at study their security architecture and see how powerful it was the spies entered and interacted with rahab within a short time the report had gotten to the king with precision as to who came how do you defeat that kind of place no so if you think you will defeat a world with command of social media where there are voices there is a large orientation we must return to the lord of the harvest the first strategy for evangelism is not going is prayer lord of the harvest we are we are we are limited until you come and give us the blueprint pray ye the lord of the harvest how does he train people to walk faster by saying tarry ye it's in your bible how did he make the early church effective he said tarry so in your waiting you are faster in your waiting you are faster every time god says wait he only made your journey faster 
so now can we understand what God has been doing in this church from January till now it's a mystery that when God says tarry is a secret code he's saying I have moved you 10 years I have moved you 15 years ahead already but because the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit you may think all you are doing is just prayer no the prayer of 50 days in one day brought 3,000 souls when the Lord of the harvest came on that day of Pentecost he announced his coming with power and great grace in one encounter 3,000 people were saved please sit down listen let me tell you this the real prayer point in this season is not God give me tea God give me bread he will the real prayer point is not God make me famous the real prayer point that commands the attention of heaven today is not oh God let me rise greater than every pastor let me be the man of God that everybody knows that is nonsense that is not prayer consistent with the heart of God the real prayer is Lord reintroduce us to the Lord of the harvest there is something about him we do not know hold on carefully oh dear I wish I had the time would have come to that Lord of the harvest the spirit of truth himself how in the world do you plan to evangelize the globe and yet not know him the Lord of the harvest is not the father the Lord of the harvest is not the son the son is the cause of the harvest not the Lord of the harvest the Lord of the harvest is the spirit he told the disciples tarry you have met the course of the harvest but wait until you meet the lord of the harvest spirit of the sovereign lord come and make your presence known reveal the glory of the reason Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known. The glory of the Let the weight of your glory come. Let the light of your river flow. The truth of your kingdom that remains us. Let the way of your glory Let the way of your glory flow. Everyone was to be used as a witness for this world evangelization the first thing that happened was he was introduced to the Lord of the harvest I hand you over to the Lord of the harvest so he comes and he begins to teach you he comes and he begins to guide you he says when he the spirit of truth is come he will reprove the world who will do the reproving you don't have the power to reprove an arrogant world you don't have the power to convince an arrogant world the disciples tried it it did not work they tried it did not work peter himself who did not have the strength he had seen miracles but he denied jesus when the witness denies Jesus what then happens to the one to be witnessed but when the spirit of truth came the Bible says handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the bodies look at those timid individuals running up and down when they caught Jesus only John the beloved remained and Mary they all ran away they saw power but they had not met the Lord of the harvest. 
when the Lord of the harvest came in power please listen he did not come to a people who were loitering around he came to a people who are tarried they didn't tarry for one day old. 50 days 40 days of lecture 10 days of extra waiting and then he came now when the day of Pentecost was fully come ah, when Peter saw them they said these men were drunk Peter said no this is that that was the beginning of his sermon this is that and Peter with the mastery of a well mentored student he began from prophet Joel down to the psalmist and he said that same Jesus you have crucified today he has been exalted as Lord and Christ the Bible says they were caught to the heart and they said men and brethren what do we do he said repent for the remission of your sins and then you shall receive this gift for the promise for the promise is sworn to you and to your children and to your children's children as many as the Lord our God shall call world evangelization is not just about moving from house to house to knock to tell people you are a sinner repent they will arrest you and jail you and kill you you will die early and it will not be persecution it will be the death of a fool there has to be a receiving of a how from heaven listen our victory in today's world is not from our oratory let me tell you the people who turned the world upside down were not that we think that ministry and world evangelization will happen just because we can speak english just because we went to school no sir there has to be another strategy our assignment in the place of intercession and prayer is to wait until he comes and he comes with our how so for you he can come and say my strategy for your efficiency as a witness is go around jericho seven times and while you are going around it does not make sense do you know why i'm telling you this years ago the holy spirit spoke to me before internet became a mainstream that people would put messages and do all of this he was in the place of prayer and the Lord spoke to me he said no my strategy for you will not be what was at that time it was a major part of the revenue for a ministry would come from sales of you know CDs cassettes and all of that and the Lord said it will not be like that for you he says put it online that is my strategy my angel will take it to the nations this was this was over a decade plus I stupidly believed because he gave me the how can I tell you, you will fail as a witness until you stay to receive your how. One of the major assignments of prayer is not just for petitions, it's for alignment. Lord, where am I and where are you? Let prayer bring us together so that the how will be downloaded. When my how comes, don't sit down again. You pray. This is how you know that you have come to the end of your prayer. You don't stop till you receive the how what is the blueprint for the next season many believers do not understand the dynamics of prayer nor the superior power that is invested in the ministry of strategic prayer with understanding you don't pray until you are tired you pray with the goal of receiving how the saints triumph in time past because they would stay with God should I pursue Lord what should I do they will remain there until the how comes can I tell you the how is a trigger when you receive it it comes with power it's shut up in your bones you cannot be silent there are businessmen who have not received the how to be able to do kingdom business that beats Babylon to its knees so we go by secular invention trying to use a cart to carry the ark and we meet many casualties on the way God's end time agenda is to reach the nations through this twofold witness of the gospel enthroning Christ in the hearts of men and bringing through our excellence and the dexterity of our results the mindset, the value system of the kingdom across territories. If we fail in this, we are not effective witnesses. 
and our assignment is not just thank God for secular formulas but you must know that secular formulas will produce secular results we need to go back and say Lord you are the Lord of the harvest how will this happen and he says for you you are going to have a bank and the name of the bank will be this this and that I will place an anointing on your bank and you will bank with kings and you will stand up and open a bank and people will say you are a banker they are right but they are wrong you are a banker who is executing banking as the how for your witness now that banking you you will see that in that banking is the mandate to reach the captains of that industry who would not come to an evangelist they perceive to be poor so god gives you the royalty and the regalia of the palace so that you can reach them for someone your how can be an investment of the tremendous healing power of God upon your life because you may not have the excellency of speech and just by speaking people will not listen but he will honor you with a demonstration of the spirit in a way that dumbfounds principalities and powers you have received your how now time to go so you get to a place and say good morning and someone gets up from a wheelchair good afternoon and a blind eye opens good night when you leave they will follow you all men seek for him now in the simplicity of your heart you can tell them i came with a simple message jesus saves jesus heals how could they deny it when your evidence is standing in front of you i forgot to tell you that the ultimate index for being an effective witness is that you must have your evidence no witness is truly a witness until your evidence stands in front of you in acts chapter 3 when they healed the man at gate beautiful are we together now acts chapter 3 from let's see 316 acts 316 they were summoned by the council and they began to make uh they began to speak and and talk in defense it says and his name through faith in his name had made this man strong whom ye see and know yea the faith which is by him had given this man perfect soundness in the presence of you all 17 and now brethren I word that through ignorance ye did as your rulers and all of that. Go ahead. Uh, let's try 20. There's something I'm looking for. Keep, please keep scrolling down. To get to the point where he says, the, the Bible says that they could not deny it because the man was standing right there in their midst. That's, that's the scripture I'm looking for. They couldn't deny the result because these were witnesses with their evidence. The man who sat at Gate Beautiful. When you say God sent me to build a bank and they look at you and say you are a carnal person, instead of you to be preaching, you are building a bank. God says, don't worry, your evidence will soon be standing. Your gospel is powerful to the degree that you preach with your evidence standing in front of you. So there are many people who do not receive that how. They do not meet the Lord of the harvest and then they start a church. And then people come and they say, the Lord sent me to transform your life. Five years, the people are not changed. And they will say, you know what? I thank you for this, your call. I don't doubt your call. You are not fake, but I, I want my life to be real. I'm going to move somewhere else quietly and look for a solution. And now you are wondering, you know, many times I see pastors and they say, apostle, what am I doing wrong? And I tell them what you are doing wrong is not the call. What you are doing wrong is you do not understand the dynamics of being called and being sent. Just because you are called does not mean you are sent. You are called to Jesus. You are sent to the world. So you must understand the difference between your being called and your commission. When he calls you, it is follow me. When he makes you, then he sends you. The empowerment is not when you are being called. The training is when you are being called. It is when you are being sent that you are empowered. There are many people whose call is genuine, but they are not yet sent. You can be so effective in your following Jesus that people will tell you, you are too effective you should be sent now and you can graduate yourself from the school of the spirit and be shocked that you know jesus so well but you have not met the lord of the harvest follow me why did he introduce them to the holy spirit again when they had been with him i know jesus i agree i have met jesus i agree 
I love Jesus, I agree. You will be shocked that you will still be ineffective because Jesus is not the Lord of the harvest. He is the cause of the harvest. If it is the harvest you want, Jesus will grant you that access to now be introduced to this personality called the Lord of the harvest. Sir, you are a man of the spirit and you have seen the great hand of God. I do not know one preacher, one kingdom person doing so much for God who did not encounter the Lord of the harvest. The generals who have gone to be with the Lord today, they cried and called his name and said, make sure you meet the Holy Spirit. T.L. Osborne, Catherine Coleman, great men even within our soil here and those that continue to do exploits they will tell you the reason for their exploit is because of their relationship with that Lord of the harvest the how only comes from him he is the Lord of the harvest it is not your harvest it is his harvest so you must wait until he gives you the blueprint hear me for some of you by reason of this prayer you need to shut down on what you are doing and return back and say, Spirit of the living God, I, come, I am tired of five years of rigma rolling. I've been doing things I thought it was you, but now it's becoming clear that there is, the evidence that should have come is not there. Rather than running up and down, I will stay like my pastor has taught me. Spirit of the living God, I am waiting. The how of my destiny revealed to me. And God will speak to you and say, Dear young lady, your assignment is connected to your marriage. Until you marry Ahasuerus, you cannot reign as Esther. Now you begin to prepare for marriage unusually. And people say, What is this your passion? It's not just about a desire to marry. He has told you your how is connected to the palace. And until you arrive at the palace, you have no assignment. If you are marrying your how, is to make sure your womb is protected to be able to carry Jesus. If you allow anything happen to that womb and you cannot carry Jesus, then you have no assignment. The first miracle this afternoon is the prayer to say, Lord, it is clear that the how has not yet come. The stagnancy in my life, the confusion in my life, it is clear that the how, I know that you have called me and I love you. But could it be that I have ignored the ministry of this Lord of the harvest, the spirit of grace? The Holy Spirit changed my life. He's revealed the how part time, per season. I remember when my time in Zaria was wrapping up. I started having these, these promptings of the Spirit because you see the way God works with me the month of June, September and December are prophetic months I have worked with God in, enough to know you must discern the seasons where His voice comes prophetically His voice can speak every day but know when the waters are about to be stirred that has, it is through your consistency of staying with God every time June September, December, I'm not careless with those months. He's at liberty to use any time, but by my dealings with him, it's not a doctrine, it's a personalized dealing. That this is how God has chosen to walk with me. Do you know the season where he speaks? He is not always speaking, no, he speaks. The Bible will tell you the 10th month and the fourth day, the word of the Lord came. I began to sense it in my heart I said Lord in truth I would tell you I didn't know whether I was Abuja or somewhere I just knew that it was time to expand the work and to do all of this for three years I struggled with the Lord praying and praying let me tell you something with God you don't pray until you are tired you don't pray until you are tired you pray until how comes I remember I took the time praying and praying and here's what happened I will tell you it's it's a miracle do you know when I finally left Zaria it was unplanned for I went to South Africa for a meeting returned back for a meeting in Lagos and then I now had to rush back to UK where the last people who left London 
before they shut down for the pandemic so i returned back to abuja rushing to do the miracle service in zaria when they announced that there has been shut down lockdown for the next three months that's how my house came up. that i was there and i said now just did a video to tell them okay i love you people and um there's there's lockdown and so everybody and i used that time to begin to pray and the lord said the season has come i said god where again what is all this whether it was abuja or joss or anywhere i would be the last person to want to be in abuja believe me i love abuja wonderful place but i just said no no no, no. i'm not sure i'm ready maybe let me go somewhere else and i remember one day see it is a difficult thing to live in the silence of god when god is silent keep praying don't assume a voice that is not there satan is a master at speaking in the silence of god so that you will think he's the one but prayer can filter it prayer can always cause the viper that is hiding in the wood to come out so prayer is a tool for discerning error if you hear and you are not sure stay and hear again once have i spoken god is not at he, he, he can allow you to hear even if it's five times provided to end up letting you know that all power belongs to god i took out time praying praying and through one or two prophetic confirmations that came from great men of god and then something happened one night i remember the lord now gave me an instruction he said by the map of abuja the map of nigeria the map of africa and the map of the globe lord this is not what i'm asking you for clarify i'm grateful for that one i sent immediately they brought the map i began to pray intensely praying on those things and then the final confirmation came i had set my i was not even praying just enjoying worship and as i placed my head i just saw the vision the map of abuja this when you are coming towards that stadium side i still don't know even the names of this this you know and i saw that that map like the city gate that's why you see the poster that introduced this i said look for that gate and replicate it immediately i saw it i said this is that lord grand grace the how had come i didn't care what else was not there the one who brought the how is responsible enough The path of a spiritual man is a very strange path. There will be many seasons of unimagined silence in your life. Never mistaken your tarrying for delay. There is a difference between delay and tarrying. Both of them are the same physical activities but sponsored by different spirits. Delay is sponsored by a demon spirit. The intention is to destroy you and to allow time to cheat you. Carrying is an advantage so that you will be able to piece together the intelligence and the resources you need. And after that tarrying, you will quantum leap into dimensions that you never imagined. I can tell you this. Let me show you this in the life of Jesus. From age 12, we do not hear about Jesus again until age 30. What was happening from that time? John the Baptist remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing moses remained in the wilderness for 40 days tarrying is an art of victory don't ever misunderstand it when god calls a solemn assembly and tells the people tarry you are in sync with how god works dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again
Bye.